Flora Shine Shoes started in 1892 in Chicago, Illinois, and they quickly gained a reputation for style and workmanship. Flora Shine began opening locations across the country, and eventually settled in just about every shopping mall that opened up. The lineup of shoes grew to include women's shoes, and by the 1980s, they even carried athletic shoes. The chain was successful and survived into the 1990s, but as many shoe stores from that time, they have since disappeared from malls. Although the shoe brand can still be found in other retail stores, the days of stopping by a Florsheim store in the mall are over. During the 1980s, the Esprit logo was everywhere. The staple mall store began as a clothing line sold out of a VW bus in San Francisco and grew to become a mainstay in malls across the country. But the bold and modern stylings of Esprit didn't match up with the changing fashion trends of the 1990s. It was actually a combination of marketing, pricing, and perception issues that led to the downturn. Esprit ultimately closed all of its North American stores following a huge earnings slump in 2011. Today, the company is a shadow of its former self and operates mainly in Europe and Asia. If your mall didn't have a Sam Goody or a Suncoast Motion Picture Company, it probably had a Musicland. Started in Minneapolis in 1955, Musicland grew to be a regional chain of music stores, but in 1978, it was merged with Sam Goody, and many of the stores began converting over. However, some of the stores remained Musicland up until the late 1990s. At that point, Sam Goody became the flagship brand, but the downfall came when Best Buy purchased the Musicland Group, which owned Sam Goody, and they began to hemorrhage money. With the rise of downloading and streaming music, the Musicland Group really had no chance, and Musicland's sister store, Sam Goody, would eventually become FYE. One of the most memorable mall stores during the 1980s was the Glamour Shots Studio. Moms, young adults, and even teenagers would pay for makeovers and photography sessions that were defined by big hair, white satin gloves, heavy eyeshadow, and contemplative poses. By the mid-1990s, there were 350 locations, but as malls began to falter, so did Glamour Shots. Although the style of photography was pretty iconic, it was also easily dated, which is why locations in malls began to fold. As of today, there is only one mall location remaining, which is in New Jersey. The very first Toys R Us opened in Maryland in 1957. The chain grew and benefited from the birth of popular culture toys like Star Wars action figures, Cabbage Patch Kids, and the explosion of video game systems like Atari and Nintendo. Toys R Us had a stranglehold on the toy market up until the rise of mass retailing and online shopping. Up until 2018, Toys R Us had nearly 750 locations across the country, but the company was strapped with debt and would file for bankruptcy. Over the next two years, all locations closed, leaving behind a huge cultural void. The Florida-based Birdines was a staple of the Miami department store scene, and had been since 1898. The Florida store, as it became known, was decorated with palm trees and pastel colors, and locations opened up all over the state. By the 1950s, it was purchased by Federated Department Stores, which would eventually own Macy's as well. Birdines' expansion continued into shopping malls through the 1990s but the decision was made to rebrand the stores to Macy's in 2004. For one year, the store was named Burdine's Macy's, but then the Burdine's name was dropped altogether. The Limited 2 was created by its parent store, The Limited, in 1987. They targeted infants, toddlers, and young girls, and they sold many products that were similar to their adult-oriented brand. The store grew from just two stores into nearly 300 by the 1990s. 
Eventually, products shifted to focus exclusively on pre-teens, and by 2008, there were over 600 stores. That same year, all Limited 2 locations were rebranded as Justice, which they had launched a few years earlier. The women's clothing retailer Dress Barn began in Stamford, Connecticut in 1962. The store catered to women entering the workforce with dresses and other clothing for the office. Locations in malls began to open across the country, and they would eventually grow to be a chain of 650 stores. As with many mall stores, the heyday was the 1980s and 1990s, but sales slumped and the chain began to struggle as they entered the 2000s. The parent company, Asina Retail Group, made the decision to restructure their business, and dress barn retail locations were less profitable so it was announced that all locations would close in 2019. Founded in 1973, County Seat, which was a denim-focused clothing store, expanded in the 1980s to reach nearly 500 stores, with most of them located inside your favorite mall. The store was the go-to place for Levi's, but they would eventually file for bankruptcy in 1996. The popular 1990s store Wet Seal tried to buy the struggling county seat out of bankruptcy, but the deal was rejected. That's when stores began to close, and another bankruptcy followed in 1999, which ultimately put the company out of business. Brookstone began as a $500 investment in 1965. Initially, it was just a catalog company that offered unique products and tools, which advertised in Popular Mechanics magazine. Soon after, stores began to open, and by the 1980s, they were owned by Quaker Oats. Mall stores were their bread and butter, and eventually kiosks began to pop up in malls too. Focus shifted away from tools and into tech products as the years passed, and by the late 1990s, Brookstone had 150 stores in 32 states, more than 100 kiosks, and an online operation. As the company entered the new century, sales were slipping and debt was increasing. Bankruptcy occurred in 2014, and a second followed in 2018, which led to all of the mall locations being closed down. Let me know in the comments if I missed any of your favorite mall stores that are now gone. If you enjoyed this video, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.